Trigger warning, this video contains references to themes of suicide which some individuals may find distressing. If you are overwhelmed with a number of events that have happened to you, the brain simply is unable to cope. Why does this always happen to me? Why do bad things happen to me? I get emotional when people say that to me. Bad things happen to everybody and the brain tends to only remember those things. Sleep's critical. If you're not sleeping, you're going to have dark thoughts. You start to remember things you'd completely forgotten as it's working through, going, well, what's going on? What's going on? We're not sleeping. We're not throwing out the rubbish. We're not connecting with, our, with, with logic, which sits here in the prefrontal cortex. And all of a sudden, we'll have a real deep, dark thought. Here's a way out. Kia ora na katoa, and welcome to Let's Get Pacific, a podcast focused on providing concepts and tools for the kete, or basket of knowledge, in dealing with suicide prevention through a Pacific lens. My name is Wiriamu, or Will, and I'll be guiding us through open, honest, and sometimes confronting talanoa about improving our mental health. Lance Burdett spent 22 years in the New Zealand police, 13 of those as a crisis negotiator. He brings together experience from training in New Zealand, Australia, England, and the USA, with elite units of police, prisons, emergency services, military, and the FBI. Lance is currently completing a diploma in positive psychology and well-being. He's published the best-selling books Behind the Tape and The Dark Side of the Brain and is working on his third book about anxiety. So Lance, you know, we can imagine that the the weather changes, skies go grey, and for me, that helps me understand that there's a process to, let's just say, something general like happiness and hopelessness. But when we talk about suicide, it can be something that vanishes right in front of your eyes as soon as you look at it. If you are overwhelmed with a number of events that have happened to you, the brain simply is unable to cope. And so it goes into a hyper state. And it will come up with suggestions. And the suggestions are based on what we've done in our life. So bringing it back to, I guess, simple terms, as we go through life, we have events that happen to us on our timeline, I call it rather, you know, hippocampus, our long-term memory. And these events, 80% of which are negative because of the bias we have towards that. Now, if we're holding our thoughts in and if we're struggling and have a number of things happening to us, if we don't do something about it early, the brain goes through a natural progression of working back through the brain, through those memories to help. Mm. But the problem with those memories that we have, we only remember the heightened state we're in at the time of the event. We don't remember how we got through them. We just know the event was there because that's where risk is and to avoid it. So this is, the brain is based in simpler times. You know, the example, don't go down by the river. Last time you went down by the river, a crocodile came out and nearly ate you. So the brain says, river crocodile, don't go. That doesn't say, and good on you for getting away, and this is what you did. You actually threw something at it and ran. It doesn't, unless somebody reminds you of it. Mm. Right? So it's the actual amygdala that we have for fight or flight. When it hypes up, it goes bang, and that's the memory. And it's formed from there. So when we go back, if we don't do something about what's in our head, the brain just simply goes back through our timeline, and it looks for similar events to help us. So it's a self-management regulator. It's this might be helpful in your past. But with 80% of our memory being of bad things and not knowing how to get through them, we are not only are we faced with whatever event we might have now, we're then being reminded of all these other things. And we start to have feelings of being a failure. Why does this always happen to me? Why do bad things happen to me? I've, I've, you know, I, I, I get emotional when people say that to me. Bad things happen to everybody, and the brain tends to only remember those things mm. to help. So when you understand that, then we have these feelings of being overwhelmed. Now, the brain will stay in that we won't sleep. Sleep's critical. If you're not sleeping, you're going to have dark thoughts. Not the only reason for dark thoughts, I might say, but they will increase because when we dream, when we have a good night's sleep, the brain processes the information of the day and puts it into our memory and throws out what they call the rubbish, the trash, the stuff we don't need. Mm. That trash builds up. So like 
real rubbish in the street. You're going to get rats coming in. You're going to get you know, rodents and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Same thing happens here. And the brain works harder then to try and fix it. Mm. How does it do that? It looks back through your memory. And so what happens there? You start to remember things you'd completely forgotten as it's working through going, well, what's going on? What's going on? We're not sleeping. We're not throwing out the rubbish. We're not connecting with, our, with, with logic, which sits here in the prefrontal cortex. And all of a sudden we'll have a real deep, dark thought. Here's a way out. Here's a way to stop the pain. So it's a progression of fight or flight. Mm. You've tried these things by yourself. They haven't worked. So how about this for an idea? And it's, it's called an ideation, a, a thought. And, a, and, and I had one, in fact, probably more than that, but I only admit to one. Mm. Uh, <laughs> in a deep, dark place, uh, I, was, I was actually at the Auckland Central Police Station where I worked, and I looked out the window. I was on the fourth floor, and a thought came into my head, it's not high enough, you have to go higher. And I just, I went, I, I, can, I remember I went white, right? And so I, I sat down, what? And I just, that immediate, I just walked out the door and I went downstairs and we have, we had in those days just the most wonderful padre. And uh, he was in a church just down the road from Auckland. I walked, walked in there and said, can I see the padre? And they said, absolutely. I must have had that look on my face. Mm. And he came in and goes, Take a seat. Mm. Let's talk. Yeah. We talked and we cried. I cried. He cried. Um, and I started to get that stuff out. And he said to me uh, a beautiful thing. And we, we prayed and we got a little piece of paper and burnt it and wrote down stuff. And all that, that good mm. you know, s- stuff that, yeah. that faith does, but it's got a scientific That's right. background to yeah. it, right? So yeah. you know, write it on a piece of paper, destroy that piece of paper. Mm. You feel better. And then he said, you know, but you are going to need some help, Lance. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my first step to getting help. Uh, I was lucky because I'd just been trained as a crisis negotiator and I'd worked for the coroner for a number of years. So I knew what an ideation was. I, I read about it, but didn't know actually how it comes. Mm. And you have a flood of thoughts at that time. It's almost like a release when you have an ideation. Yeah. It's like, I can stop the pain. Right. I can stop the hurt that I'm bringing on my family. I can release. I, there is a way out. And you don't see the consequences of the hurt that you leave because you're in an irrational place. Yeah. And that's the key for me to suicide. Mm. If we can catch people early enough, and there are indicators that things aren't well, if we can get them there, and I call it shake and take, mm. shake them out of their current thoughts, show them some ways, but certainly steer them as quick as possible towards help. And then, of course, we come up against some systems, right, where it's not geared for it. Mm. And, and you know, we, that's the problem, I guess. So what the work we do these days is around coping skills. Simple things, one, to stop you from thinking. So there's an easy technique. If you just breathe in and out through your nose to send at six-second intervals, just continually in and out, It puts you into the alpha zone. Now, the alpha zone is the part between being awake and asleep. So you're conscious, but the thoughts stop. Mm -hmm. And so when I have people who call me who are suicidal, and I've had them um, through the very first lockdown when we weren't used to this whole new world of ours. You know, I remember a farmer, he was distraught. And I said, where are you? He says, I'm in the paddock. Sit down, get next to a fence, lean against the fence. And I just took him through this breathing. Mm -hmm. And then I said, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? <laughs> and uh, he goes, yeah, I'm waiting for the voice that's not there. Mm. And I said, that's it, the voice. And wow. that's what we tend to follow when we're at a dark time. Yeah. The voice, the thing that's been our best friend mm. all our life mm. has turned. Yeah, But we still hold on to it and we kind of – and so that's, that's mm. what happens. So if we can get people – to, to start doing some simple things to understand the principles of the brain, then that would they would find helpful, I'm sure. The breathing bit you talked about, when you're in those fight or flight, maybe you could explain what that is, but is it like yet yeah, the engine's revving, it's going? It, it is. So um, I, I, the way I would show people is a couple of techniques. So the first one is if we stop breathing right now, so people who are watching or listening to this, if they stop breathing and just breathe fully out, the heart stops beating and you have calm. 
So the brain is wired to take a deep breath. So if you take a big deep breath, now you're in a heightened state. So it's wired to do that, to keep the oxygen going, to get the adrenaline and cortisol. Cortisol is the bad one. It's a release of sugars and a, the high energy to keep you alert to danger. And we stay in that. And while you're in that state, all the organs shut down mm. in your body. Mm. So you're not processing food. The kidneys and liver are under. So the body goes into a stressed state. And so um, when we're in that high, breathe out is the, the first one. And the other one is a sigh. This is, a, this is a brilliant one, and I love doing this. I do this at the start of the session to show how the brain works. So um, all I'll ask you to do, and I'll do it too, but I'm used to it now. So <laughs> all I want you to do is take a big, deep breath and hold it, and then I'll tell you to sigh as hard as you can. So big, deep okay. breath. Now sigh as hard as you can. <sighs> now think of something immediately after your sigh. Look at something and try and recognize it. You can't. So many people think of food. Mm. So I usually think of chocolate because <laughs> that's my go-to food when I'm stressed. Uh, some people, like, oh, the other day was hamburgers. A couple of the rooms said, hamburgers. <laughs> but it clears your thoughts yeah, and you're calm. So the, And it's all to do with breathing. So inside of our lungs, we have something called alveoli. They are little nodes that grab hold of oxygen. When you don't breathe, you just breathe. These things collapse. So we're not getting uh, pure oxygen. Mm. But we're getting too much as well. So it doesn't do the, the carbon dioxide because we also need that. Yeah. So when you sigh out, all of them collapse. Your next breath, they fully inflate. You get the oxygen, reconnects you with the calm part of our wow. head. And it's just like, you know, when you phone IT, they say turn it off and back on again. Mm. And it always works. Yeah. Can you think, I pay you a lot of money for me to <laughs> tell me to turn my computer <laughs> off and on. But it works. And so that's so those two techniques yeah. – and, 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 and along with the six-second breathing technique, mm. in and out, those are the three techniques that I only talk about these days. Because if you get too much oxygen, the opposite happens. You hyperventilate right. and it'll make you worse. Yeah. So any one of those three breathing techniques is a way to start to calm the brain down, to stop it from overthinking. Mm. It's called catastrophizing. Overthinking is I, my preference of that. I think the words we use are probably – a bit too robust. Right. Right. So it's not catastrophizing, it's problem solving. Right. It's just overthinking the problem. Mm. And so if we can bring it back to simple times, and this is why I love, you know, Pacifica, Māori. Mm. I love this whole perspective um, of First Nations in Canada, talking with them. They all come back to the earth, the sky, the water. Mm. They come back to the very basics. And that's what it's about breathing. They all talk about, if you talk with, with Māori and Pacifica, they'll say, it's the nose for breathing, it's the mouth for eating. Mm. Don't breathe through your mouth. Mm. That's where you take it. So if you, and they know what they perhaps may not have known, but the olfactory system sits under here, and it's one of our biggest senses. So our senses work from eyesight, our biggest one, hearing, smell, taste, touch. Mm. So it's a, quite an important point. If we could just remember to breathe through her nose, um, you know, go back to the very basics. Mm. Why is it we feel good in the shower? Well, we, water is a cleanser. You know, Pacifica knowing this, Māori know this, that water is, is a good thing. And, you know, after going on to Utapā, we, we do the wash of it. Mm. Well, you generate chemicals in your brain. Mm. So the neuroscience is catching up with what Indigenous populations have always known. Yeah. You know, this podcast is also for those family members who are looking mm. for signs, who are bombarded with information. You know, mm. we're all bombarded with a lot. Yes. And trying to make uh, good, sound decisions and just compounds and compounds. So we can expect, actually, this is a not normal response, but a response based on... Oh, no, it is a normal response. Okay, okay. I'm trying yeah. to use the right yeah, language. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but then I always make a joke. So what's normal? Mm. So and who in the room here is normal? Put your, don't you put your hand down. <laughs> all right, so we're all unique. We can make some generalizations about, you know, we've all got a voice and an internal narrative. We, who puts you under the most pressure mm. when you make a mistake? Who beats you up the mm. worst? Mm. Who do you talk to the most mm. in your day? We can make those, but it's our timeline, our experiences that make us very, very unique. Mm. There's no two people the same, right? And so it's that uniqueness. But everybody is normal. We have neural diversity. We're living in an age now where technology is caught up mm. and we're now learning more about people and the brain and the connection that we all 
have mm. and why we do things. And it's education, understanding, then brings this whole release, yes. this whole, oh, I see why now. You know, talking about what are the indicators when somebody is struggling with whatever it might be. Mm. Where it's not necessarily with suicide. So we want to try and catch this early. So when we're struggling with a thought, the first thing is we won't talk. Completely shut ourselves off. Also, they won't look back at you. So you and I are looking at each other. Right? Yeah. We're not looking into our eyes because mm. that's just <laughs> kind of weird, Will. Right? So no one looks back. It's not a cultural thing. It's just we sort of look. But what we're doing is looking around the edges of our mouth and the edges of our eyes. We're reading facial expressions, gotcha. right? So that drops off. We tend not to look back at the person. Mm. The head is down mm. because the brain is down. So they are looking down, not sleeping, looking disheveled. Uh, there's a behavior change. So they might previously have been well groomed. Doesn't matter because this, that, that's, you know, we're just trying to get through life. Their diet will change, mm. junk food, because they need fats and sugars because the brain is working flat out. Wow. And that's why self-medication, so they, they might take up smoking, they might take up drinking, they might increase any of those things mm. to try and stop this from just to shut it down and restart. And we know that some people who attempt suicide, all they want to do is unplug and restart. And a lot of people, once they get through this, then go back and do go back to their old place of where they were born and go home, centre themselves and go back through the steps in their life yes. to recall memories. And that's the right thing to do. We tend not to think of it this way. Look, so... You know, I'll, I'll do. How many people have had in the room? How many people have had physio, thera, physio, right? So mm. I go that, that physio, right? Oh, you've had therapy then? <laughs> no, I haven't. What's well, physiotherapy, right? So what do they do? They push on the part that hurts mm. to release the energy, right? So I'm going through it at the moment with my shoulder; it's yep. hurting. So he even stuck some needles on there, and it was great, and mm. it just releases all the energy, right? So it hurts. So what do people, counselors, psychologists, psychotherapists do? They push on the part that hurts. Mm -hmm. Why? To release the energy, the emotion. The brain is driven by the limbic system where the emotions sit. It's all about emotions. And I wanted to write a book about that, but somebody's already done it. <laughs> so I'm writing a book on anxiety. Yes. <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is emotions. Mm. It's, and it's, it's the emotions that do this to us. It's the, we are emo emotionally driven creatures. Mm. That's what's got us as a species to where we are yep. because we have a limbic system and it's a unique limbic system. Mm. Um, and so really it is about understanding and removing that whole, well, I don't need help. I don't need – well, we all need help. Mm. There's no person in the world that's gone through life and hasn't had to go to a doctor. But that's, that's okay, you know, it's something wrong with your body, something wrong up here. Ooh. Mm. Because we didn't know. Now we know about the brain through brain imaging. Neuroscience is brain imaging, where the brain lights up. Now we know how to do stuff and how to fix it and how to do things about it. You need to get the person who's your, your loved one to talk – but may not be you, uh, the right person to talk with, because it might have been something that has happened within the, the whanau. It could mm. be something that has happened um, outside that you're embarrassed about, that you you don't want to hurt anyone else about. Mm. So that's why it has to be a stranger. In the Pacific family, sometimes it's not encouraged to talk. The hierarchy is very strong. And your only coping mechanism is to bottle it up. Bottling it up is, um, I, I can't think of a better example, but I, I talk about it as being uh, like a festering sore, right? So it has to be excised and, and cleaned out and rebuilt. Yeah. It's no different to that because it'll just keep festering and festering and, you know, next thing mm -hmm. we're, we're down that big hole again, down that, that, that worry spiral. So it really is about understanding. If you, if you understand the fundamentals, mm. you realise you're not different. You know, I, I started my journey after depression by reading a book called Heal Yourself, something like that. Louise Hay. I've looked at it again. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, it absolutely resonated with me. Right, it was something that I realised that I'm normal, and here's some helpful things to do. We are unique, and so it is 
finding what works for us. Mm. So I've found some coping school techniques that, that we show people that breathing is the fundamental. And that's why we've always known yoga and meditation and mindfulness. They all involve breathing. Mm. So it's breathing. You know, you don't have to do the jump in the ice cold bath mm. or any of that. You just have to control your breathing. A lot of work I do these days when I'm doing leadership teams is no one person holds all the answers. Mm. Everyone would be would be a lot better if we could understand how words can hurt, how actions can hurt, how how what our actions can in fact mm. hurt others. And so if we can understand that and educate people on that, then they'll start to realise, well, maybe we, uh, we I might need to change the way I, I believe in that structure that – Perhaps that structure might be something we look, look rethink. We all have a spiritual self, right? And, um, you know, I, I talk about the voice in the head and all that sort of stuff. So we, we have these commonalities and we all have a belief system. Now, it depends on what your belief system was. So I was brought up in a, what could be described a Christian, you know, we went to Bible school, mm-hmm. etc. Uh, however, it never resonated with me. But I every night I pray, mm. and every morning I pray. I, yeah. But that's how I start my end my day and start my day. Um, some might call it a mantra. Mm. Thank you for the day. Thank you for the you know. Um, we also know now through through brain imaging that that neuroscience is showing that spirituality comes to us in many ways. So religions just one part of spirituality. It's a big part, and it's a good part in European society, not so much in other societies, mm. right? But if you look at every society in the world, they believe in something. And it's that belief that grounds us, that centers us, going back to the analogy of the tree, Mm. the roots. There's always something that we are grounded in, and that's what we've got to return to in times of need and crisis. What what, what grounds us as to where we are? yeah, you know, like I pray, and I, you know, oftentimes I might start. Off, I do start off by saying, "Lord, thank you for the day. Mm. Thank you for." Um, do I believe in a higher being? Well, I, mm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's that whole. Yeah. It's because we can't grasp it. Yeah. But do I believe in in spirituality? Absolutely. Mm. It's the part that's missing in the world. It comes to us in many ways. Spirituality. Prayer, mindfulness, meditation. You know, if the same part of the spiritual self lights up when you do something you get fully engrossed in. Mm. So we're in a conversation right now, fully engrossed in it. Our spiritual brain is lighting up because we're connecting as two people. Oxytocin Mm. does that. It's not just talking to a friend. I think we get lost when we say words like, you got to talk to a mate. We should (laughs) say, talk to a mate because Mm. other things take over. And I like it's really, I see it in podcasting. You know, there's this, um, Beautiful sinking. And I think I read a study around our heartbeats are sinking right now. Right, it's like, yeah. that's that's awesome. But it's also... It doesn't they, help me if I'm struggling. Well, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah true, <laughs> true. Right? Yeah. So this is, the, this is, you're right on the money. Mm. Man, you're right on the money. The, it's the connection with the person that you're talking with uh, because you have to have that connection. And all that person is going to do is steer you and guide you in the right direction without fixing. Never fix people empower them to fix themselves because we feel hopeless and helpless when we're down in a hole. So give them hope. Show them a podcast Mm. where people are talking about suicide because that's where they are. They know what they're going through. So guide them towards that. Guide them towards what help? Well, the help that they want to. Mm. It's the connection with the person, not necessarily what they do. So we've been told we need to go to a psychologist. We need to go. Well, do we? The answer is no. You need to go to somebody who doesn't judge, who doesn't um, fix, who listens and guides and perhaps gives you some options. Four things happen when we talk with each other. The first thing is we're getting it out of our head. The second thing is we're telling people how we feel. The emotion's going to come out, so get it out. The next thing we do is we share experiences. So, But you're only sharing your experience with the other person and hoping that they have enough experience to guide us. They might not. Mm. So that's where the, the problem lies, and then we get the oxytocin. So it's that third thing that is the issue. We want to talk with somebody who's either experienced it 
But even then, if they come, oh, this is what I did. I mean, I talk about what I did. It's probably not right. Well, mm. I'll tell you, it's not the right thing that I recommend these days. All I did was take six months off work and put three, build three stories on the side of my house. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, what? <laughs> but that's me, and it worked for me, right? It was a complete disconnection from my work, yeah. etc. And so it's it's it's, a, it's you know start reading, get prolifically reading about people's stories, and 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 you know go online and watch videos about people's, and so. That listening to podcasts, finding your own direction is, is the key to this because no two people are the same. Mm. So therefore, if you do this, it may not work for you. Yeah. But we know the breathing works for everybody. Mm. Yeah. So that's why I always come back to that as the starting point. Then at least, the because if they're not in a rational place and you are, I'm talking about you and saying, oh, you could try this and this, they're not hearing it. Yeah. They're still overthinking the world. Mm. So we've got to put people in a level. So when I went for help to a psychologist, um, I didn't hear a word he said. Mm. And he said, do this breathing technique. And I did it and it, I was panicking. I went back and, you know, you know months time, and I said, dude, <laughs> your breathing is rubbish. <laughs> and he said, so what are you doing? And I said, I, he said, I told you just three breaths. I didn't hear it. Mm. I just heard, keep doing it and it'll be, you'll be better. Mm. Somebody said exercise. So here's Lance out 10Ks every day mm. and then doing an hour in the gym. Mm. <laughs> Started to look pretty good, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't feel good because I'm overtraining and that puts you back into a stress state. So it's, you, you've got to be uh, guide people, steer them in all directions, just empower them. Yeah. You know, it's a bit like uh, the example I used, you know, somebody's got a, a cancer diagnosis and it's terminal. So all of a sudden we flood them with emails. Have you looked at this? Here's a, there's a new carrot uh, juice technique in Mexico. Should we, you, you know, th- that's not what they want to hear. They want to hear love and kindness. And that's how we guide people, love and kindness mm-hmm. and understanding and just listen. When you were a crisis negotiator, were you trying to connect with people that way that you're talking about now? No. No. Okay, so that's different. No, it's yeah. it's so what we're doing there is we're following a recognized process of what's going on, how did you get here? Find out why because we want to know what the hook is and what the trigger is, what's kept you going. Yeah. And that's the key to getting them out of there. Mm. Right? So hold on to your heart, mm. not your head in times of crisis. So what is it that has kept you going? So if I was to give uh, the, the listeners one tip on this, and that is hold on to what you love because the heart is the center of us. Forget this. This is a prehistoric, the brain is a prehistoric um, implement that we no longer need, right? It's, it's based for simpler times. Now, the, the neuroscience that is, is showing this, we're completely disconnected most of our day from our prefrontal cortex mm. because we're making too many decisions, life's so busy, it's, mm. we're, we're overwhelmed. And that disconnection means we're back in our limbic system where the only thing in there is our experiences. And so coming back to the timeline with the 80% being negative, it's ourself talking to ourself about ourself. Mm. Doesn't work because we're all limited in what we've done. Mm. If you've got a loved one, don't push them. Don't keep trying to fix them because you push them away. It's gentle touches, gentle strokes. And, you know, just a, a gentle, a, a, all good? Mm. Going mm. okay? I'm always here when you want to talk, right. not if you want to talk. I'm here when you want to talk. Yeah, and quite tricky in real time. I had a friend text me this morning saying he's had some problems at work and he's done the walkout, right? Mm. My messaging back was, you know, Take care, happy to chat whenever you're ready. That's it. Yeah, but it feels a bit wrong, doesn't it? It, it feels does. like I should call and say, hey, mate, you know, come on, can't walk out, or something something to that effect. Trying to fix it, right? So yeah. trying to help. Yeah. That's what we try to do. We try to help others uh, too much. Yeah. Um, the example I use might be um, what we used to do. So perhaps um, we're sitting with somebody and, and they cry, right? They, they suddenly tear up. And so we've got tissues on the table. This happens, you know, in workplaces all the time. So the person picks up the tissues and hands it to the person and goes, 
oh, you okay? Mm-hmm. How do you think that person feels? Because mm. they haven't been able to control their emotions and now, oh, here you go, you okay? Yeah. They feel worse. They feel, so all you do is point to the tissues and go, without saying anything, you just point. And so they reach and grab the tissues and wipe their own eyes. Yeah. That's the example I would use, mm. showing people that they can do this. You know, being down in that hole, I'll tell you one thing. We are better and stronger than we think we are. This brain that we've been gifted is dumb. (laughs) It's dumb. It's designed for one reason to keep us alive, and it does that by looking for bad things to avoid it. That's the the simplest understanding of the brain. Mm -hmm. It is designed for one thing, to keep us alive by looking at the bad because that's where the danger is. So when you kind of understand that, you can change that negativity bias by looking for good, mm. by looking for the best things, you know, getting a notebook and writing down one thing a day that made you smile. If you're really down, um, good on you for getting out of bed. Mm. Even if it was to go to the toilet to return back to bed, you write that down. I got out of bed today. That's what I did today, so that's a good thing. Yeah. And so you start to build on those, and it can be something just so insignificant to others but so so Mm. big for you and that's what you look for those little pieces of gold during your day and you write those down and you look back in a week's time and you go look how far i've come yeah the only time you'll learn from your past is when you look back and examine it and that's Mm. what psychologists do they take you back to release the energy right Uh, but we can do it ourselves we look back we look at it and we think to ourselves what did i do well what would I do differently? And then that's how you learn. The brain sees the mountaintop but not how to get there. Mm. Right? So it says, this is wrong. You need to do everything. So we go hard out, don't we? You mm. know, it's uh, the example, you're going to lose a bit of weight because summer's coming up. You think, oh. So the first thing this thing says, dumb. It says, uh, right, well, you're going to go hard. So you're going to eat ice for the next three months. Mm. <laughs> What? Okay, then. Or you're going to join a gym for four years because it's cheaper, right? So go hard or go home. The next thing it says is, uh, right, start tonight. Oh, well, it's Friday. Okay, we'll start tomorrow. Oh, come on, it's the weekend. All right, start ne- it's your birthday. Start next year. Oh, you've got that anniversary coming up. You know, it's it, 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 it doesn't like to change. But when it does so, it goes full on, hard out. It's not. Mm-hmm. You know, here's something that people could try um, – to make them feel good. And that might be one day, each day of one week, do one thing for somebody else that makes them smile, even if it's just smiling at them Mm. or saying good morning. And then reflect back on what you've done over that week. Fix something in your house. You know that squeaky door? Mm. Just don't fix everything in one night. No, you just have to... Do it in small steps. The next day you fix that gate or that latch. The next day you be meaning to get that dongle working on the TV, whatever it might Mm, be, mm. and only that one thing. And then on the end of seven days, look back at what you've achieved and you'll realise then that it's the small things that count. Mm. It is the small things that build up on us that cause us to fall down when the big thing happens. So don't sweat the small stuff. Mm, Throw it in the bin. Deal with the small stuff, and that's what they actually meant right in that book. So the, the title is a bit, <laughs> a bit misleading. The, the click it's about <laughs> it is about doing those little things and dealing with them, and the little things build to be big things. Yeah. So you, if you put a patch on the waka, mm. chances are it'll pop straight out. If you can just build little bits and slowly build down to it, the pressure of the big hole becomes smaller and smaller. The water will slow. Lance Burdett, I want to thank you for always, I said to you when you arrived, you answer my calls, you're my Batman, you know, it's like <laughs> put the Lance Burdett light in the sky and you turn up thank um, you. and, you know, you've spent years and a career finding these tools and and sometimes it's like, uh, I still can't believe you come here and tell us all that for free, you know, it's beautiful. <laughs> um, in some ways it's a oxymoron or whatever, but you're awesome, bro. And um, for businesses, people who wish to follow your journey and see what, you know, you're always doing something, you're always writing these books, you're always doing something, where can they follow you? Uh, so our website is WARN International, W-A-R-N, it stands for Wellness, Awareness, Resilience and Negotiation. 
Um, so warninternational.com, go there. We've got lots of, we've got a YouTube channel going. We're, I'm on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, you are. I'm not doing that <laughs> dance. Yeah, we but might I'm, clip but, that but, up but, and put that as a meme. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we, we're all over the social media and, and, and we, we give people little Things to think about. Um, you know, very lucky my family worked with me and my daughter's very good at doing these little mm. these little memes uh, that you would have seen. And and people just, we get lots of lovely feedback saying, that was, I needed that today. Mm. And it's just those little things that we put out there. So we're here for people. Um, you know, lots of free stuff there. If they want to engage us for their for their teams, then, then you'll find that our costs are very, very modest considering. Thank you, bro. Beautiful. If you think you or someone you know may be at immediate risk, call 111 or connect to the following services to get help. Text the Need to Talk helpline on 1737. Call the Depression helpline on 0800 111 757 or text 4202. If you would like more information on suicide prevention training and education, visit Levar on www.leva.co.nz. More support numbers are available in the show's description.